Now, I want you to turn in your Bibles just now, please, to our Scripture reading, and we're turning to the book of Psalms. And we're in Psalm 107, please, 107th Psalm. The book of Psalms. And we're in Psalm 107. Now, when you find Psalm 107, come with me, please, down to verse number 8. Psalm 107 and verse number 8. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness, such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought them down, he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down, and there was none to help. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and break their bands in sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Amen. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to that precious reading of His truth. The goodness of God tonight. Do you believe in the goodness of God? Let me say, friends, this evening, God is good. But even though God is good tonight, yet many people doubt the goodness of God. Many people challenge the goodness of God tonight. People would say, well, sure, if God is good, why does God allow so much suffering in the world? If God is good, why is there so much wickedness? If God is good, why does it seem that evil is on the rise? And everything that's good, and everything that's pure, and everything that's right is tamped into the gutter. If God is good, well then why is all this taking place tonight? Tell me, is it God's fault that our world is the way it is? Is it God's fault tonight the way man is? Is it God's fault tonight that the world is the way it is? Is it because God's not good Is it because the Bible's not true? The way mankind is, the way he is. Friend, tonight, listen to me. In spite of the suffering in this world, in spite of the pain in this world, and in spite of the wickedness in this world, and in spite of the evilness in this world, friend, will you get this into your mind and into your heart and into your soul tonight? Listen to me. God is good.
And I want you tonight, and God wants you to get to grasp tonight, not with the wrath of God, not with the judgment of God, but with the goodness of God. Because God is good tonight. Do you know why the world is the way it is, sir? Do you know why mankind is the way that he is? I'll tell you why. Because mankind has turned his back on God. And people don't want anything to do with the goodness of God. But my friend, listen tonight. God wants to speak to you concerning his goodness. Remember tonight, it's the goodness of God that leadeth to repentance. And friend, tonight, God wants you to know how good He is toward you. There's a lovely wee verse there that says in verse 9, listen to what it says, For He satisfieth the longing soul. You know, I'll tell you, friends, nobody can satisfy the longing soul like God. And it says in that very same verse, and he filleth the longing soul with goodness. I'll tell you, friend, that's why man is misses out in so much, you know, because they know nothing of the goodness of God. And if man tonight would only come to know the goodness of God and accept the goodness of God tonight, man would be a pleasurable creature. But this is how God wants you to see His goodness tonight. God wants you to see His goodness in the light of where you are now. God wants you to see His goodness in the way you are, love. In the way you are, sir. For those of you tonight that are not saved, God wants you to see yourself in the light of His goodness. Now let's look to the passage tonight and let us see ourselves. Verse number 10 tonight because here we have the misery, the misery of man's position. Let me tell you, unsaved friend tonight, you need to get to grips with the misery of your position. Look what it says there, such as sit in darkness. Do you know, my dear unsaved friend, right, that's where the sinner sits this evening, sits in nature's darkness. And that's where you are tonight, dear unsaved friend. And it doesn't matter tonight who you are or what you are. That's where you are tonight. You sit tonight in darkness. The misery of man's position. And you know, my dear unsaved friend tonight, do you know what the Lord Jesus says? The Lord Jesus says in Matthew 6 and verse 23, great is that darkness. This darkness tonight is not about putting the lights out. This darkness is real darkness. This darkness is gross darkness. And do you know what scares me? The Bible says men love darkness rather than light. And that's the misery tonight of man's position. And unsafe friend tonight, you sit tonight in the dungeon of sin. And tonight you are a prisoner and you're a captive of the devil. But if you look at that very same verse tonight, not only are you sitting tonight in darkness, that very same verse tells you tonight you're sitting under the shadow of death. Every unsaved person tonight, 
And it doesn't matter whether you're Protestant or Catholic, orange or green, if you're not saved tonight, you're a captive of the devil, and tonight a death sentence hangs in your head. Do you know what the Bible says in Romans 6, 23? The wages of sin is death. And my friend took a good look there at verse number, number 10, right? Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. Oh, how miserable man's position is. My dear unsaved friend tonight, listen, this is where you sit. This is how you sit as a condemned sinner. You've been held captive by the devil at his will. But in the light of all of this tonight, there's the goodness of God. The miserable, the misery of man's possession. But do you know, friend, in that very same portion of Holy Scripture tonight, not only do you see the misery of man's position, you see the madness of man's pride. Did you notice that? The madness of man's pride. Take a wee look there at verse 11, because they rebelled against the words of God and contemn the counsel of the Most High. I'll tell you, friend, to listen tonight. Any man or any woman that rebels against the teachings of Holy Scripture does it through the madness of their pride. You know, friend, I know we live in the year 2016, but listen, wait till I tell you something. God still speaks to men, and God will always speak to men through His Word. Do you know what the Bible says in Job 30, 33, verse 14? Do you know what it says? For God speaketh once, yea, twice, Yet man, man perceiveth it not. God speaketh once, love, that's mighty. But when God speaks twice, that's mercy tonight. I'll tell you, it's a merciful thing when God speaks to you twice. But then that wee verse in Job 33, 14 says, Ah, but man perceiveth it not. That's madness to me. The madness of man's pride is that he doesn't heed God. Never mind hear God. Man doesn't heed God. Tell me something tonight, your own safe friend. How many times has God spoken to you? Because when God speaks to you, God will speak concerning your sin. That's one thing God will speak to you about. Because your sin tonight is your greatest problem. Because the Bible says in James 1.15, sin when it is finished bringeth forth death. That's why you're abiding under the shadow of death tonight. And I'm talking about eternal death. And God will not only talk to you about your sin tonight, God will talk to you about your soul. Sure, man, we're talking about the longing soul here. Man's longing of a soul. And you have a soul tonight that needs to be saved. You have a soul tonight that's lost. You have a soul tonight that's on the road to hell. And it's the madness of your pride tonight. That's stopping you from getting saved. Man says, sir, I don't, I don't need God. And I'll tell you what kind of pride man's filled with. He's filled with our religious pride. I'll tell you, they're the boys that, they're the boys that's hardest. The boys that's filled with religious pride. Oh, but your I'm all right, and I say my prayers, and I read my Bible, and I'm baptized, and I'm confirmed, and I'm everything else. I don't need God. Well, Jesus says you must be born again.
Friend, this book not only talks to you about your soul, and it not only talks about your sin, it talks about God's Son tonight. God will always speak to you about His Son. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye Him, His Son that He was sent to the cross. His Son that was crowned with thorns. His Son that was nailed by the hands and feet. His Son tonight, whose visage was marred more than any other man. His Son tonight, who took your place. God will always talk to you about His Son. God will tell you about His Son tonight, and perhaps more times than enough, God has spoken to you about His Son. The Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. How many times have you been spoken to of Him concerning Him through, who hung on Calvary's cross, who suffered and bled and died, and you say, not for me. Not for me. That kind of stuff is for jailbirds. That kind of stuff's for drunkards. That stuff's not for me. Ah, but it is for you, love. Because the Bible says we are all as an unclean thing. The madness of man's prayed. Look at verse 12 because you've got the mercy through man's pain tonight. Look at verse number 12. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Do you know what that wee verse 12 teaches me? That wee verse 12 teaches me God won't let any sinner go to hell too easy. That's how good God is tonight. In spite of the misery of man's position, in spite of the madness of man's pride, God will speak to man through the mercy of pain, and God was merciful through pain. Because sometimes God has to hurt a man to save him. And sometimes God has to put a man down to get him to look up, you know. You see, my dear unsaved friend, as you sit tonight in the light of the goodness of God, here's a wee verse God wants you to know tonight. He's not willing that you should perish. And sometimes God has to do terrible things. And sometimes God has to bring hurt to the body to get healing to the soul. It says there, in verse 12, Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Sometimes God has to bring man down. Listen, friend, is God going to have to bring you down? How many times already you've heard this? How many times already have you been brought before the cross and you've been brought before His blessed Son and His sin, your sin tonight, has been brought before you and you're still sitting there. You're sitting, still sitting in darkness and under the shadow of death. You know, friend, the goodness of God tonight teaches me that sometimes God has to be cruel. To be kind. I have seen it only too often, men who hardened their hearts against the Almighty. And I'll tell you, I've seen God bring them down. And God put them onto beds of pain and upon beds of pain. God got through to them. You know, friend, tonight, nobody knows more pain than God himself. How it must have pained him to send his son to the cross. How must it have pained him tonight to turn his back upon him while he bore your sin and mine on his own body upon the tree. I'll tell you this, nobody knows more about pain than God. And tonight, tonight sometimes God has to speak loud to get us to listen. 
the misery of man's position. The madness of man's pride. The mercy through man's pain. And I want you to see tonight in the lateness of God's goodness. We see the moment of man's plea. Because if you look down there at verse 13, then they cried unto the Lord. Who cried unto the Lord? I'll tell you who cried unto the Lord. Those who rebelled against the words of God. Those who contemned against the counsels of the Almighty. It was when God brought them down in mercy then they cried. Notice to whom they cried. They cried to the one that could save. They cried unto the Lord. Do you know dear friend tonight that's the one to whom you must cry. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I have said this time and time again, and I have said o'er and o'er again too, salvation's not in the church. There's a pile of people in this country tonight they are going to hell, headlong to hell, because they believe in their church. And they're going headlong to hell because of their creeds. The Word of God says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. I want to stand tonight in this pulpit and say, Christ Jesus is the only Savior of sinners. He shed his blood to pay redemption's price. There's no other Savior, only him. Then they cried unto the Lord. But look, look quickly, and I'm nearly finished. Look at the miracle from man's pearl. And it says there, therefore, therefore he, he uh, Verse number, verse number 13, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. And look at verse number 14, He brought them out of darkness. Glory to God, Christ can bring you out of, the, out of the darkness of sin. And listen, and out from under the shadow of death tonight, glory to God, Christ can set you free. Oh, friend, he set me free almost 31 years ago. Friend, he brought me out of nature's darkness. He brought me to, from underneath the shadow of eternal death. He set me free. For whosoever the sun sets free is free indeed. Glory to God. I'm free tonight. And the sun has set me free. And I'll tell you, not only has he set me free tonight, he satisfies me. I'm telling you tonight, he does satisfy the longing soul. And he fills the longing soul with goodness. Boys, and I think of the nights, and I thought running to the Valley Hotel in Five Mile Town, that was to fill the... There was no longing in them places. The night I trusted the, the Lord Jesus. I'll tell you, not only did he satisfy, save me, he satisfied me, satisfied. You know what the Lord Jesus himself said? Listen to this wee bit. I am the bread of life. He says, He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. 
Oh, friend, I can tell you, I know all about the misery of man's position for I was there. But I know this wonderful satisfaction tonight that comes from knowing him. And I'll tell you from this pulpit in Kilkeel Baptist Tabernacle tonight, George McConnell is lavished by the goodness of God. God is good tonight that he didn't let me go to hell. God is good that he spared me and he sent his son to die for me. And God is good tonight that he has spared you and wants to save you. Don't shun tonight. Don't rebel tonight. Don't reject the need, the goodness of God. That's burn a wee word of prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. The reason why you're sitting in this gospel meeting tonight under the preaching of God's Word and under the singing of God's Word, it's because of the goodness of God. Nothing else, only the goodness of God. Look to the cross. See the goodness of God. See the bleeding Lamb of God. There you see the goodness of God. See the bleeding wounds. That's the goodness of God. See the empty cross tonight. That's the goodness of God. Do you see the empty tomb tonight? That's the goodness of God. Do you see these moments that you have to decide? It's the goodness of God. If you're here tonight and God has been speaking and you're troubled about your sin and your soul, and you feel the drawing power of God, the Holy Ghost, don't you reject it tonight. Don't you rebel. You come. Rafferty can wait. I'll deal with you tonight. I'll help you. And may God help you to come. Lord, tonight we turn the eternal issues of this meeting to thee and we leave them there in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.